Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Welcome to your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Yes, I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. So this is going to be a general energy reading for the weekend of Friday, October 25th through Sunday, October 27th. But please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this reading is dated for the 25th through the 27th, it does not mean it has to resonate at that time. Whenever you watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you at that moment in time. Yes. So just a reminder, um, there will be no, uh, inner masculine, inner feminine readings this weekend just because I will not have the time to record them um, because I am working like crazy all weekend. And also there will be no morning coffee this coming Monday because I have a really late gig on Sunday and I just, I already can tell that I'm going to need Monday to just recover <laughs> from this weekend. So, so after this weekend edition, morning, the next episode of Morning Coffee will be on Tuesday. Okay. Also, really super exciting. I'm sure you guys are all aware, but just a little reminder, Halloween is next week. Oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm excited. I love Halloween. Honestly, there are days where I kind of wish... I kind of wish I could go trick-or-treating again, but you know what? Those days are over. <laughs> but that would be fun. <laughs> okay, so um, let's just get into the reading for today. So I don't have a pre-shuffle, but that's because... That's because I was sitting here shuffling the deck, getting ready to go, and um, I landed... I literally just landed on this. So on one side of the deck here, we have the High Priestess. On the other side of the deck here, we have the Hierophant. Ah, that's so cool. These two are the, are, are, they're a version of counterparts. There are a number of versions of counterparts within the, within the Tarot deck. There is the Emperor and the Empress, the High Priest, I'm sorry, the, well, yeah, the High Priestess and the, um, the Hierophant. And then there's the Kings and Queens of Pentacles, Wands, uh, Swords, and Cups. I believe and then there's like the lovers and the devil which are like opposites but um that thing that's just really cool and the high priestess and the high and the hierophant have been a recurring message um during this this week's morning coffees but then also um in some of the readings i've already started some of the november readings this week i did scorpio sagittarius and capricorn and scorpio and sagittarius um, I think both of them got, I know Scorpio got the high priest, the, the high priestess and the hierophant in their reading. And I feel like Sagittarius did too, because they were very similar messages. I don't remember, but, but this has been a recurring theme all week. Um, and so just the fact that I just landed here right before I started, you know, recording, I looked, I went to go say, okay, let's get the pre-shuffle energies, but then I saw this and I was like, oh no, oh no, I gotta stay here. I, this is just too cool. This is just too cool. This is kind of the message of the week. What I'm getting from this is, um, you know, the balance between masculine and feminine, sure, but potentially using some of the the hardships or some of the tough lessons of the physical world um, represented, uh, technically represented by the Hierophant, because in my opinion, the Hierophant represents the masculine and the masculine is very three-dimensional, physically oriented, yes, um, versus some of the lessons of the spiritual world, which is represented by the High Priestess, the High Priestess representing the feminine and the, um, you know, psychic abilities, the unknown receptivity, all that stuff, the spiritual realms. And the, and, and the fusion of the two of those. You can't have one without the other. And even though here on my channel, I have kind of maybe not given the Hierophant energies the best reputation. They, <laughs> I'm really not a conformist. And um, the Hierophant energies represent, you know, society, university, conformity, religion, uh, dogma, indoctrination, um, government, the military. 
um, you know, just uh, so society, social norms and all that stuff. Um, it really hasn't gotten the best reputation here on my, in, 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 on my behalf, but also one of the common themes of this week is recognizing those lessons, what the Hierophant stands for, and how you relate to that, and then being able to expand your view from there while reaching the secrets that the High Priestess has to offer, or the, the knowledge, the secret knowledge that the High Priestess has to offer, that she's not all that willing to just divulge, you know? She's not gonna, she's not gonna just reveal her secrets, secrets to anybody all willy-nilly. Like, you have to be you have to be ready for it you know you have to have reached a certain level to be able to even comprehend it otherwise it's just going to go right over your head and it's a waste of time and a waste of energy and she's not about that you know what i mean so yeah that's really cool i love that that landed there okay so with that said let's get into the rest of the reading for your weekend yes Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of Friday, October 25th through Sunday, October 27th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this four shuffles, and then we'll see what we've got. For our weekend, Friday, October 25th through Sunday, October... 27th, 2019, y'all. All right, here we go. Ooh, well, looky here. So now I'm going to continue. I'm going to shuffle. But now, look, the High Priestess is still at the top of the deck. But now we have the backside. We have secrets being revealed. We have the We have her allowing us behind the veil. Yes, and on the other side is none other than the Ace of Swords. Truth, honesty, integrity, the aha moment, epiphany, uh, eureka, the light bulb moment, inspiration, understanding, yes? Seeing things clearly, seeing things for what they truly are. Wisdom, knowledge, that is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Mm. Alrighty, so let's see what we've got for today. Okay, there's some. Eyes are closed, so I can't see what that is yet. Ooh, there's more. Oh, one shuffle is sufficient today. All right, spirit. All right. Okay, overall energy. We there, There's that Ace of Swords again. Oh, looky here. And the High Priestess. Oh, shit. All right. Very interesting. So we have the Nine of Wands, we have the Seven of Swords, we have the Queen of Wands, and we have the Six of Swords again. And it's interesting because... Because when I looked at the High Priestess this time, especially with the Ace of Swords here, I heard her say, okay, now what have you learned? Interesting. We have the Ace of Swords here again. Now the Ace, this side of the Ace of Swords is a little darker the other side was much brighter here but okay it's a little darker but also uh, you have this eagle here right the eagle represents freedom it represents um it does represent feminine energies it represents receptivity understanding but it also represents higher states of awareness okay and with the high priest is asking you here what have you learned she's basically asking you to Mm, I heard redefine yourself. Redefine yourself. Okay, you have the Nine of Wands, which is perseverance. Perseverance is key. You have the Seven of Swords, which is deception. However, 
I don't feel like this is like anything underhanded. I don't feel like anyone's trying to really steal anything. But this person here is carrying five swords. Yes, this is a little this is a little dark, but um, this person is carrying five swords, right? And he's basically escaping, sure, but five represents change, okay? So I feel like someone is, or you might be in this moment of change, in this moment of understanding, in this moment of breaking free from something. Um, this guy is escaping from a military encampment and normally this would represent theft okay it's that's just not what i'm picking up here i'm picking up you're just being very um incognito okay you're trying to remain under the, you're trying to fly under the radar here you're not trying to ruffle too many feathers you're going through a transformation you've come to the understanding that it's really not important what other people think feel say or do in relation to your transformation however you're also not really trying to ruffle any feathers okay you're trying to make a clean break you're not trying to you know be too dramatic about it or really make it too too well known like for example i had a job once not too long ago um and i put in my two weeks and i told no one about it and because I, I didn't want to make a big deal about it, I just it like literally I put in my two weeks. I ended up getting out of there earlier than I expected, but um, it was just like one day I was still working there, and the next day, poof, I was gone, because I really didn't want to make a big deal out of it. And that's what I'm feeling like here. Also, though, I feel like there, especially with this nine of wands energy, there are some people around you that could really make a huge fuss about this and you're well aware of that with that nine of wands energy because let me tell you you've been through some shit with this okay that makes a lot of sense um so that so so i would i would definitely commend you for not wanting to um make a big deal out of it excuse me i just want to for some reason i just got i i felt like i wanted to light my sage so i'm gonna light my sage again um so yeah, so there's a definitely a new level of um, of self-confidence, that's for sure, with this Queen of Wands energy, okay? And I'm actually, with this Queen of Wands and the Six of Swords, and in the Six of Swords, we have a depiction of these people leaving a cave. I'm sorry, it's so, it gets so dark when I put it up to the camera, but see, you, have a, you see how these people are leaving this cave here? They're emerging some, from some sort of darkness. Um, they're emerging from some sort of completed healing process, for sure. And also, looky here, on this side of the Nine of Wands, you have an instance where somebody is being led into a cave, and that's for healing, that's for rest, uh, recuperation, and all that. And while you have already gone through that process of healing and rest you're still you're still really needing to persevere because you may still you may be physically you may feel better but like mentally and emotionally you might still be a little fragile or just a little cautious again because there are people around you you're pretty aware of the fact that there are people around you that are going to make a big old stink a big old fuss over the changes that you are making in your life over uh, uh, having to do with what you've recently learned, yes, about yourself, about the laws of the universe, about everything. The people around you, the circumstances around you, everything, okay? But this Queen of Wands energy is really good. Is really, really good. It's representing self-confidence. It's representing being sure of yourself, understanding what you want, knowing what you want, and actually being being in a receptive mode right now. And that really could mean being in a receptive mode in terms of finding a way out even. Okay, that's really, that's pretty good. It really is pretty good. Okay, so let's get some clarification here. I want to look a little deeper into this energy here for you. Let's see what we can get you. Some clarity. Okay, let's see. Let's look a little deeper into this. 
Do I want to split it up? I do, actually. I want to look at this one right here. Nine of Wands, Seven of Swords. Let's look a little... Ooh, whoa. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold on. No, that's too much. Yes, that is. Well, actually, let's just leave it here. Um, we have the Wheel of Fortune, which is great. We have the Emperor. All right. The Eight of Swords, which I, I, when, as soon as I heard, saw the Eight of Swords, I heard Jailbreak. We have the Two of Wands. We've got the Five of Wands. So, yep, there's all that conflict. But we have the Ace of Pentacles. Overall energy. Page of Cups. Beautiful. All right. So, yep, there's definitely an energy. There's definitely an energy of taking your power back, the emperor, being the master of your own domain, making your decisions for yourself, not doing anything anyone else says you should do that does not resonate with you, moving in your own direction, taking the bull by the reins. And that is actively changing your, mm, I wanna say, yeah, it's changing your destiny for sure. Because you're, act you're taking an active role in creating a new reality for yourself, okay? Again, Eight of Swords, Jailbreak. But then you do have that Five of Wands in which someone is like, well, I don't necessarily agree with this. Well, you know what? I don't give a damn what you agree with or what you don't agree with. This is not your decision to make, says the Emperor. Mm -hmm. I know that's right, okay? Thank you very much. Decision being made or has been made, moving into a new direction, a new offer. This The Ace of Pentacles is like a gift, can be a gift from the universe. Um, and I feel like this is, this is a combination of a gift from the universe, but also you creating this yourself. But then that's also what's influencing the universe to gift this to you. By you, does that make sense? By you taking control, by you taking responsibility by you making a choice for yourself by you going in your own direction the universe is following suit and helping you out with a new opportunity in some way that could be career that could be financial that could just be a new way of thinking a new energetic reality that is leading you to some sort of new expression in life i mean take it as it resonates yeah hold on just a second All right, so, and then uh, overall energy, you have the Page of Cups here, and that's the dreamer, okay? So that's being very aware of what your dreams are, the emotional weight your dreams have, wanting to move in that direction, uh, a new emotional start, a new emotional opportunity. It may even symbolize some sort of reconciliation for some of you, but that's a minor, minor detail. That's not really what I'm getting here. I'm getting that this is, you're very focused on your dreams and your emotions and you're keeping it that way. And that's excellent because that's absolutely what's influencing you to, to, to make this change, to make this decision and start something new, okay? This really could be a new financial reality. Some of you may be working on a new career trajectory, a new job. You may be working on finding a new job. Um, or just creating a new a new opportunity for yourself. I feel a very strong energy of um, having an active role in creating some sort of new, I heard a new foundation for yourself, okay? So that could be a new career trajectory, that could be a new job, that could just be a new way of living or expressing yourself, okay? That's excellent. So what I want to look at now, I want to get a little clarity on this Queen of Wands and the Six of Swords. What is this here for you? Ooh. The Ten of Wands. Interesting. But the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups did come out reversed. We have the Page of Swords at the bottom of the deck. Okay, that's more, uh, yeah, that's a sentry. That's a defense mechanism. Um, okay, so with this, I, I, I wanna, I'm gonna pull a little bit more for this, but I wanna stay here for just a second and talk about this. So you have the Queen of Wands with the Six of Swords. <clears throat> There's definitely a new sense of confidence, of self-assurance, of, um, self-esteem 
okay and it's really like it's really finally an energy in which someone has definitely put the past behind you have success with the with the five of cups here in reverse you have successfully um, gone through this healing process with this six of swords and you are actively moving away from the past moving away from the pain the heartbreak letting that go and letting your spirit shine here ten of wands i'm hearing cutting through the brambles okay so you may be in the process of untangling the mess of um, releasing the burdens the ten uh, tens also represent a completion you have two tens here between the wheel of fortune which is the tenth card of the major arcana and then you have the ten of wands i feel like you're moving away from some sort of burden some sort of obligation something that no longer suits you let's get a little bit more on that Excellent. Whoa, 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 ho, 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 ho. whoa. Overall energy is damn, y'all. The world. Holy shit. With none under than the ten of this is an insane stack of cards. Holy shit. There's okay, so you have the ten of cups, you have the queen of wands again, you have the lovers, you have the ten of pentacles, you have justice, you have judgment, four of cups, okay. Um, Four of Cups, unfortunately, is definitely speaking to some sort of missed opportunity here. Three of Cups, though. Oh, good golly. King of Wands now. And the Queen of Pentacles. Oof. With the Eight of Cups. Good golly. <clears throat> I don't even know what to make of this right now. This is just like so much. 10, 10, 10 though. And you know what's funny? I Lately I've been, one of the number synchronicities I've been seeing has been 10, 10, which is really cool. Um, you know, okay, so there was a missed opportunity here. There, there's no doubt about it. There was a missed opportunity here. Four of Wands. You have the King of Wands, the Queen of Wands, the Lovers, the Three of Cups, okay? Um, and yet this, this missed opportunity actually was a really good thing, regardless of how it might seem on the surface. So then with that said, I don't even really want to call this a missed opportunity, um, but actually it, it, really, it really truly is. Um, because, but this is a good thing because it's helping at least one of you right now, whomever is in this Queen of Wands energy, it could be the feminine in this circle, in this situation because we do have all the, we've got a bunch of counterparts here. We had the High Priestess and the Hierophant. Now we have the Queen and the King of Wands, okay? Um, but this is, and I'm, I'm just going to say this is mostly for the feminine here in this counterpart situation, but... Um, She's really pulled herself together. He or she, it doesn't matter. You've really pulled yourself together, okay? And with this Three of Cups energy here, this is a union. This is a union card. This is also a union of body, mind, and spirit, yes? This is you coming together. You're pulling your pieces together and becoming whole, all right? And thus, because of that, because you have learned to love yourself or you've learned to love yourself on a deeper level, you have accepted responsibility for your actions or your role in the situation, you've matured, you've grounded yourself, you've become even more um, in tune with uh, nurturance and unconditional love, but it's also to the point where you can show yourself this unconditional love. The nurturance and the, the, the protection that you would offer to someone else is now being offered to yourself, and thus you're walking away from a toxic situation. And, and with this Three of Cups here, celebration is at hand, or celebration is called for. I mean, judgment, justice, Judgment justice between this king and this queen of wands, also represented by the lovers. I mean, come on, guys. We've been talking about counterparts all week, haven't we? The king and the queen of wands and the lovers. 
And you know, I'm gonna go ahead and say with the High Priestess and the Hierophant energies, the masculine has really taught the feminine a very, very valuable lesson. Where, and on, on, the, on the flip side, the feminine is also now in the process of teaching the masculine a very, very valuable lesson. See, however, I don't even think I should say it that way. We've both been teaching each other. Okay, so just because the feminine might be walking away from something here, that's really not a bad thing. Why? Because she's walking away from low vibrational situations, justice and judgment. She's woken up, all right? And it, she's in the process of waking you up by merely removing herself from the situation. That's literally, that is literally all she has to do. All she has to do is remove herself from the situation, continue on her ascension journey, and this is going to influence the counterpart in the masculine to go through his own journey. Why? Because the feminine is no longer feeding into the toxicity of <clears throat> the situation. She's no longer feeding into toxic femininity. She's also no longer feeding into toxic masculinity. So then the masculine has to, is left basically with his own to his own devices and probably continues to perpetuate these cycles in the rest in the world without the presence of the feminine here but that with the with the feminine not being present in the situation that allows the masculine to start to make decisions for himself and to see and understand the toxicity for himself where then ultimately he can go through the awakening and serve justice in his life too Make sense? It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Ten of Wands represents the burdens of the situation. Ten of Cups represents learning what real love is, learning what you really want out of love, learning what you really want out of a relationship, learning what you really need to feel loved to feel supported to feel stable also with that ten of pentacles but also learning what it is what it means what true love really means and 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 recognizing that you can in fact be your own ten of cups you don't need anyone external to you to be that ten of pentacles is the lesson learned in my opinion the ten of pentacles is um, a graduation a, a point of graduation from one lesson in life to the next lesson in life and thus with the world here and also the ace of pentacles that is what you're moving towards it is definitely what you're moving towards this is a really beautiful energy and i know i know this is difficult i know this is much easier said than done but once you reach a certain level here it actually becomes much easier than you think okay Okay, so with that said, now I would like to get Spirit's take on this. So we're going to see, what am I doing? What am I doing? We're going to see what Spirit has to say about this. And any advice Spirit may have for us in terms of this situation here moving forward. All right, one more shuffle. Here we go. Six of Pentacles. Reciprocity. Um, and this is definitely a lesson that the feminine has learned all too well recently. And I want to say, I really, okay, so that's what, that's the message spirit is giving right now. Um, if you're experiencing a situation in which someone is walking away from you or you are walking away from someone and it doesn't really matter this doesn't necessarily have to be all about counterparts okay i mean yes it is we're talking about counterparts masculine and feminine energy but it doesn't have to be like divine counterparts or, or like twin flames or whatever this can literally be something that you're experiencing in your life but it's translating into relationships with like family and friends okay 
and there could be there could be an individual a certain individual in your life that was a major catalyst to this for you but ultimately the focus right now is your complete surroundings all right so if you are walking away from some people or a circumstance or or that is happening to you like someone's walking away from you it's purely purely for the fact that the situation probably just, well, not probably, the situation just is not balanced, is not reciprocal, okay? Six of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, it talks about balance, reciprocity, and fairness. Generosity also, okay? Giving back. What's this? Oh, the Seven of Cups. Some people might be a little, the Seven of Cups is underneath the deck right now. This isn't much of a... I mean, I'm not getting much from this other than that. There are some people around you that are really confused by this. They don't quite understand it, but that's even more of a reason why you need to continue on your journey and do what it is you need to do because you can't make anyone understand anything. You, you, could, you, could, you could describe the feelings that you're going through or the experiences that you have till you're blue in the face and they'll still probably look like you have six heads. Actually, they'll look like you probably have 12 heads at this point because now you're talking all this gibberish and you're blue in the face. <laughs> okay? So like there's really words words can only take you so far. Actions speak much louder. So instead of just standing standing there trying to explain it to them verbally, why not show them? Why not show them how magical life can be? Why not show them how abundant we truly are? Why not show them how infinite we truly are just by living your truth? That's really the only way to influence anyone to make any sort of change. Why? Because then they're like, well, wait a second. What do they have that I don't have? Or what do they know that I don't know? And then they start going, finding the, the, the information. And then before you know it, they go through an awakening too. Boop. You see? But you have to let them do that on their time. On their time, in their way, through their own process. Right? Okay. What else, Spirit? Anything else? Oh, okay. Well, now we have a message about the masculine here. The masculine has been coming out as this King of Cups lately through from a lot of different readers, from a lot of different perspectives, okay? Um, and all right, so we have the Nine of Pentacles, the King of Cups, the Two of Cups, and under, underneath the deck overall energy, we have the Hermit, all right? So yeah, the masculine is going through a process of growing up of becoming emotionally mature emotionally responsible autonomous taking his or her power back and this is all influenced by the feminine of course there's a balance there's a union coming through now i'm <laughs> okay i'm gonna be completely honest i tend to be really quite biased <laughs> When love starts coming out, I don't necessarily like to speak about love specifically. I don't look at love specifically unless I'm doing like afternoon tea or something. These readings are not intended to be about love specifically. This is all about, this is really just what spirit wants to talk with us about or whatever we need to discuss right now, what we need to know, what blah, blah, what not, whatever. Okay. But love is coming through here with this two of cups. Also with the lovers. Okay, we have the major and minor arcana version. Okay, I do see the two of cups as the minor arcana version of the lovers, which is right here. Um, what I'm getting with this is the masculine is going through a period of introspection, of finding his or herself, of finding themselves, yes? Um, and it's leading them to independence and autonomy nine of pentacles in which the masculine will be open and ready to express his love to the feminine and actually come together in the physical because here the lovers is talking about the relationship in the non-physical in the spiritual or in the 5d right but here we're talking about with the two of cups we're talking about the expression of this love in the physical 
but we have two Virgo energies also between the high, uh, the, 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 the Hermit and the Nine of Pentacles. We also have Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, mostly Scorpio with the um, King of Cups here. But it doesn't have to be any sign. It can be anybody, right? But see, that's the thing. This actually, <clears throat> Spirit is actually reiterating what I was already talking about with this energy with the King and the Queen of Wands and the lovers and like the, the, the counterpart dynamic. As somebody walks away from a non-reciprocal situation, Six of Pentacles, or at least removes themselves, refuses to engage, and this is really not for any other reasons other than, it's not for any reason other than the fact that it's just not reciprocal. It's not balanced, meaning it's not healthy, it's toxic, get out of there, right? When someone refuses to engage in situations that are any less than reciprocal, it, again, causes the other side of the equation to maybe immediately, maybe not right away, or maybe just eventually, go through a process of introspection, the hermit, and thus come out of it on the other side more emotionally mature and responsible and aware and more independent and autonomous, which leaves this person open to have a balanced a situation, a union to come together with someone or something. <coughs> Excuse me. And it could just be at this moment, it could just be coming together within the self. You know, finding that balance of masculine and feminine energy within, which then is allowed to shine through on the external. That's beautiful energy, guys. It's really, really beautiful. Okay, so with that said, let's get our Oracle guidance for the weekend. And I want to get some guidance from the dragons today to end our week on a really strong note, yeah? Okie dokie. Let's see what we get. Oracle guidance, oracle guidance. One more shuffle, they say. Okay, one more shuffle. All right, here we go. Oracle guidance, please, Spirit, for our weekend. For our weekend edition. That is so many cards, you guys. Yeah, that's too many. That's, wait, that's too... Okay, well, actually, there's our card right there. We have... Archangel Gabriel's dragon brings purification. Self-discipline will speed ascension and bring joy. You can carry Archangel Gabriel's diamond. Beautiful. So let's read that. Oh, fifth dimensional. I know that's right. Okay. Fifth dimensional diamond white dragons serve Archangel Gabriel, the mighty pure white angel of clarity, joy, and hope. We, oh sorry, when we are ready to connect more deeply to him, his dragons shine their crystal light into our energy fields and physical body, allowing deep cleansing and purification to take place. They light up our true essence and we become transparent to the spiritual world. This means that all the lower energies that have not been released from our auric field become visible. So it is important to forgive, love, and respect ourselves and others so that our aura becomes totally clear. Then the dragons will rejoice, for we are ready to walk the diamond ascension path. They will lead the way, clearing and energizing our sparkling new high-frequency journey and bringing us clarity, hope and joy so that Archangel Gabriel with his diamond wings can overlight us. The guidance here says, receiving this card implies you are expected to cooperate with Archangel Gabriel's diamond white dragons using self-examination and self-discipline to accelerate your ascension. The dragons can then illuminate your internally, your in, I'm sorry, the dragons can then illuminate you internally with happiness, clarity, and higher expectation. 
you will, be, you will become a shining beacon and will automatically radiate light that shows others the way. You will have earned the right to be a walking master. You will carry in your fields the glorious light of Archangel Gabriel's cosmic diamond, which is a life-transforming ascension tool. The diamond white dragons will swirl and dance around you, ensuring that the glittering, shimmering cosmic diamond stays securely in place over your energy fields. It will protect your aura and fill you with joy, purity, and bliss. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully this was helpful for you. I hope you all have a really fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Tuesday morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.